Hello and welcome to the program where we make fun of sales, training, and promotional films of the past. My name is Jason Reed. I'm here as always along with my co-host, Chris May. And Chris, today we have a film that actually sells the whole idea of capitalism. Yeah, this one... Um... This one was what we we sort of pulled or called from the, uh, the the chambers of commerce of America. And if there's if there is a group of people that you and I are in, integrally aware of, and we've done a lot of work with in our own respective veins, it has been with chambers of commerce. I do a, I do work yeah. with, for instance, a local chamber of commerce here in 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 Oakville, Ontario, Canada, and and they do really good work with a lot of great businesses, and they all support each other and the i guess the inference in this video that we're going to watch today is that that everybody doing their part is also part of that big support mechanism which is essentially what chambers were built on the foundation of yeah i mean the the title is it's everybody's business and you'll yeah. see you know, I, I think one of the wonderful things in this production is showing how the average person, whether they're a farmer or a business person or even a housewife, because uh, this is from the 50s, uh, yeah, actually 50s, contributes so. to the economy. And yeah. this was a pretty big production for its time. Um, it features a couple of actors who you'll probably, if you're old enough, You'll know their voices. Uh, McDonald yeah. Carey was the narrator, and Herb Vigran was played Jonathan, and they were character actors that did a ton of work from the '50s all the way through to the '80s. So it'll seem familiar to you. Yeah, a lot of the character voices and and the animation and the color schemes and the way that they, the way that they, uh, the even just the composition all look very very familiar to me and. You know, I, it was tough at first to place where I'd seen it until we had a discussion about it, and then it became crystal clear. <laughs> yes, as you'll find out. So get set for a trip back into the late 1700s as we look at It's Everybody's Business. Ooh, sounds fancy. Sounds grand. This looks like it's going to be a cartoon. Sure sounds like a cartoon, that's for sure. It's everybody's business. Made in Wilmington, Delaware, where all quality cartoons are made. I don't know that anyone's ever said that. I, <laughs> Probably not. I don't think so. Nope. Look at that cast of characters. Bill Melendez. Is there any reason why I know that name? Yes, he worked at Disney for years. Most okay, of those animators were big names. Well, they were. I remember them from. Ago in the history of man's voyage it's a cartoon. toward a better world. It is a cartoon, yay! Eager passengers toward the shores of a I'm new fully expecting right now Bugs building. Bunny to pop up in this scene as Our everybody's boss. Were constructing the <laughs> and then say, gee, I took a wrong toy in Albuquerque. Which always, I always, when I grew up and I found out about New Mexico, I was like, why was he going to New Mexico at all? I don't know. better life for themselves. Even young Jonathan, an unskilled lad from across the sea, hoped to find a job oh, where he could judgy. dress according to his ability. <laughs> kind of judgy. <laughs> preacher, preacher, pick that. Do that, do it, do it. You're unskilled, do it. Uh, uh. He's going to go mad as a hatter. <laughs> as That's your passed, next profession, comedy writer. Jonathan's <laughs> earnings increased. I didn't but realize you made hats with an upside down skills. frying pan. I didn't know either, but that's what this is. This is a learning opportunity for all of us today. Mr. Blessrady, am I not the best crown rounder and brim trimmer in ye business? Mm -hmm. Then verily, methinks I am worth more moolah. That you are, Jonathan. Wow, those sales Ooh. are into COVID territory. Uh, oh, that's ugly. No that is ugly. Praise, Mr. Blessed Gravy. I quit. Well, sales and profit. That's a bad attitude. Food. Yeah. I could run you At least he put the sign back. Myself. That's nice hey, of him. Why not? I'll give him marks business. for that. I'll give him marks oh, for that. He needs a little capital, a little push, and an idea. Yeah, an idea. Let's see. So I said to him, I wouldn't wear that hat to a dog fight. Why I wouldn't wear that hat to a dog fight? What in the world? <laughs> well, no kidding. They're illegal. Why not? Women's hats. 
I don't know, sometimes historic realism just isn't what you want to go for. It's not the way I remember it. Fortunately, Jonathan was thrifty enough to keep a little nest egg for such an emergency. Ah. I always have my savings in a little bag with a dollar sign. Well, How about you, Chris? Building took care oh, of absolutely. I'm very, very traditional that way. And there was nothing left to pay for the necessary tools and equipment. Ah. Way to budget, Jonathan. But happily, Jonathan had a good reputation. And, and went to beg for money. His idea of wow, look at that cash. His friends and neighbors came were out willing of a basket. to invest some of their savings in his new business. And a boot. Wow, to be a burglar back then. To be a banker back then. Why wasn't Jonathan getting into banking? Yeah, there's no banks around. He would have had a monopoly. Long, he would have had all the money in town. First, he had he to wouldn't have had to worry about making those hats or prancing around with a sandwich board, singing in the streets. Singing and skipping with a bell. Oh, well. On the other hand, maybe he really liked that. So that was the job for him. Everyone's allowed a dream. Now those are the skinniest necks I've ever seen on a cartoon woman. The and the skinniest waists. And sales dollars poured in from Oh, good customers. for you, young Jonathan. Jonathan had big dreams. Wait till he finds out those are all chocolate coins. Wait till he finds out that that's only the dream of a banker. His employees' wages had to be paid. What, the guy who does the bows gets paid that taxes. much? Uh, young Jonathan was just cutting the corners off hats, and he wanted a raise, remember? And his friends yeah, who right. helped finance the business had to be paid a return on their investment. Oh, message. You invest in someone's uh -huh. business, you get paid. money back. Jonathan had Don't know that it's that cut and dry, I'll be honest with you. Well, it's break. better than what uh. Jonathan's having to deal with. He's just got that lousy horse. Boy, that is glue factory territory, that one. Uh, we got competition from France. All you got to do is call it something exotic like a bonnet, and suddenly everybody wants it. It's La Bonnet. La Bonnet. <laughs> They're really big on those little mechanical banks. Yeah, they love putting money into toys. The opportunity to participate in the building of the American way of life as we know it today. It's just foundation, Jason. It's foundation. Life that depends upon Building blocks. Of Americans who send a portion of their it's all about blocks, see? It's all blocks. It's all about the population of your town, USA, going People to watch their watch money off. Some of the money's reading. That money was re reading a book. Totally disinterested. In the hope of earning dividends or interest on our investment. That's a modern city. Oh, look, a nuclear reactor. That is modern. This is the city of tomorrow. I'm expecting to see Spider-Man swinging through this city. Oh, this Anyone is so very 1967 Spider-Man. Or a share of stock is helping to finance our business system. Now this is a back when they were encouraging people to invest money rather than spend it on stuff. Yeah, look at this. It's put money These into the economy. The now today it's building, go crazy on on Boxing tools, Day and and, and and Black Friday. New job opportunities for our expanding population. The goods we produce wow, that's a lot of goods. Main yeah, we need country. more of grand pianos. There's never enough. <laughs> While the main street of today doesn't look much like the main. Oh, I wish main streets of today looked like that. Of our you remember when Main Street, Toronto, Young Street used to look like this? Oh, I sure do. I loved it. And those guys in the windows and trying to get you to buy a fridge. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't not. know that those people were supposed <laughs> to be there, Jason. I don't know that they were allowed to be there. <laughs> It's always good to encourage your kids to climb in the fridge, you know? Oh, yeah. Here, look, it's so much room. You can invite your friends over. A successful business must have enough sales dollars coming in to enable management to pay the expenses. That of kept him cool before air conditioning. Salaries and wages. I'll be honest. I'm the, I do the same thing. When I used to have money, I used to love the smell. And product development. What is going on there? What in the world is going on there? In addition to all of these French made sales, costume and some man hidden behind the wall. To hmm. taxes to local, state, and federal governments. You know, more people would pay taxes if it was that fun. Wise management if everything was toys, I think our economy would probably work better. The remainder of the profit is paid out as dividends. Here comes the money train. 
I want to ride that money train. Going back to that weird town where everyone seems to, to be a quadruplet or quintuplet. Look, they're all the same. It's another invasion. Why does this look so viral? Wait, occasionally? Uh, I'm over here. Oh, there's only one lemon, Chris. Only one guy lost money out of that entire town. That's why there's a money train out of that town, Jason. To meet the demands of our rising population for a better standard of living. Like the youth of yesterday, the young people of today deserve uh, the same it's enough to bring to a tear to your eye. Accomplishment. Careful now, careful and now. Don't get, don't get too freedom, emotional here. Continue to build a better life for themselves. He can't find his way into <laughs> the city. <laughs> in the world of tomorrow. Keep America beautiful. Put litter in its place. He still can't find his way in. Wow, that was something else. That was and that was It's Everybody's Business. Now, Chris, you know, as we look at the yeah. message of this, which is that it is everybody's business, one of the things that really hit me was this idea of the average person investing in other people's businesses and in other companies. How well do you think that it really sold that idea? To me, this is the one that out of all that we have seen so far in cheesy sales cinema, this is the one that nailed it yeah. because they made a point of showing the average person over and over and over again. First, uh, you, you had you had our, our our entrepreneur who reached out to his local merchant and they were all independent operations and they were all willing to invest. And then when you went to the town where you were when you mentioned everybody looked like they were quintuplets. Uh, everybody looked alike. They were all watching their money go away in a train. And when the train arrived at its destination, it all went into supplying and feeding the growth of business. And then that train came back and all this money came flooding off the train, which was their dividends. This hit the nail on the head in a very entertaining way, showing that it doesn't matter who you are. Get in the game and have the game work for you. And the message in any sort of sales communication is always the number one thing. Now, the vehicle for that message is always the story. So I thought we could do some storytelling right. 101 here, Chris. Let's do it. I love storytelling yeah. 101. We've discussed it before, but this is a really great example of it, is the idea of using stock characters and tropes as kind of shorthands. So when you've got a complex message and you're doing a, a short film or some short message, you really want to be able to get people to understand, you know, exactly who the characters are and what their characteristics are like. Of course. And yeah. this is something that this film does really well and in a whole bunch of different ways. So let's have a look. Um, now, the first way that we can create stock characters, and it's a way that we don't nearly as much anymore because it contains a trap, is through ethnicity. So yeah, if you remember, that's trap. <laughs> yeah, these days it is for sure. But if you remember that first business owner, do you remember what kind of accent he had? It was Scottish. Yeah. So the guy on the left was Scottish. Of course, Adam Smith was the creator of the idea of capitalism. He was Scottish. The whole idea of, you know, Scottish businessmen and Scottish thrift, especially back then, were well known. And the guy mm -hmm. on the right obviously is French. And he's French because he's selling the stylish hats. And of course, people know that the French know style, right? But let's look at another way we can create a stock character, and that's through dress. If you look at the way these guys are drawn, they're basically the same guy, but you know the difference obviously is the way they're dressed, what they're doing. So Chris, if you had never seen this film and I showed you this photo and said, which one's the CEO and which one's the worker, would you be able to figure it out? Absolutely. CEOs in the suit and the workers in the overalls. And it's funny you mentioned that because, and, and folks, this is why we invite you to subscribe so you can go back and watch old episodes. Jason, you and I did another edition of Cheesy Sales Cinema where we did a very similar uh, examination. Remember back at the Coca-Cola mm -hmm. plant where you had the, the executives were in the suits and then you had the guys coming up from the, the bottling department. And they were wearing the overalls. And that, again, was yeah. a trope uh, using that, a very similar style. Exactly. So we have ethnicity, we have dress. And then because we're using animation, we can actually take ideas and concepts and personify them into characters, 
which they did here. So the oh, investment yes. of the average person are these little dollar bills that run around. And we got the one that's reading on the train. I don't know why. <laughs> that, I can't explain that. <laughs> and then, of course, we have the bad investment, which is our friend, the lemon. Yeah, but they personified the lemon as a hobo with not a care in the world which was really amazing. That is such, and it was only in there for a few seconds, but that is such a complex character. It is, and it's not that he's just, you know, kind of relaxed, but he has a certain dignity, right? So it's like, you know, even if you lose your money, if you lose it supporting business, there's still reason to be proud. There's that, but uh, the other thing that I got from it was, this is the lemon being the subject of of the of the particular scene here so this is uh it, it, it's almost deceit in that look at me i am well to do i am debonair in my own ah, mind invest yeah. in me but i'm a lemon so it's it's appealing but you're gonna lose your money yeah see and the, all of these wonderful layers that you can build on they did build on Precisely. when they created these characters and but, did a great job of it yeah <laughs> The one confusing thing, and maybe you can help me out here, Chris, okay. of all of these symbols and all of these tropes is this. So this <laughs> comes from the research and development uh, period in the movie. So we see, obviously, somebody working behind a screen because what they're doing is secret. But can you explain the French maid outfit? Okay, this is where I got thrown was you see a... You see a bare hand coming out from behind what looks to be one of those, one of those remember those temporary things that you could get changed behind? Oh, yes. And yep. you got a French maid who's just sort of it's like, why, why, where are we? Are we in a hotel room? Is this, is, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know where this is or why this is. Maybe they were trying to make R&D sexy, or maybe they were playing on the idea of experimental model. I don't know. Maybe people ah. pictured model, French maid. You know? Could have been a double entendre, and we just didn't get it. Maybe it's just we didn't get it. <laughs> and that is our episode. But yeah. first, before we leave, I want to let you guys know of an opportunity. If you belong to an association, a corporation, or an organization, and you have virtual meetings, and you would like us to do something customized, some customized entertainment for that meeting or for that conference, you can actually do that. You can hire Chris and I. We will riff what you want us to riff. And the best part is if you we do a lot of interactive through the mediums of of uh, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and stay with us on the program. Cheesy Sales Cinema, because we're going to do another one of these, but we can have it tailored directly to you and the people that you are reaching out to be it your company or your group or your gathering. Jason and I have well in excess of 10, 15, 20 years of combined between. And the only reason I throw those years out is, you know, we have so many years of television experience. We have so many years of public speaking experience, and we have a ton of years uh, in, in doing you know, first this virtual experience, but also keynote. We have a lot that we can offer. And right now in this virtual era, for as long as this continues to be the only possibility, we can bring a live feel to a virtual medium and that is a winning combination yes really hard to do entertainment now with a virtual conference or virtual meeting but this is actually perfect for you so if you want to contact us to get the ball rolling and just see how easy it can be for you just go to our website cheesy sales cinema.com cheesy with a z and a y and a y, and a y. y. Mm -hmm. And just click on uh, book Chris and Jason for your event. There's a contact form there and we can get the ball rolling. And it is fully customizable. That's something that Jason says an awful lot. It's customizable. It doesn't have to look like a podcast studio. I'm in the personally, I'm in the middle of a project right now, which is why I'm, uh, you know, I'm still with the facial hair, which I don't normally have. Uh, but uh, we can make it look and feel the way you want it because essentially this is almost like a Hollywood set. We can strip it and dress it the way you want it. And it suddenly becomes yours and exclusive. Exactly. So contact us via the website. We'd love to hear yeah. from you. And until next time for Chris May, I'm Jason Reed. We'll see you soon. <laughs>